Here is a short update on discrete complex analysis. I want to talk about Gauche's integral formula a little bit more. I made a little bit more progress in the last week and uh, if the formula works and I want to explain how that goes. So first of all we have seen the discrete complex plane which is uh, made of the discrete lattice, the Z2 lattice. We have first of all the notion of uh, analytic functions which is a discrete version. So that's the first thing I want to talk about, analytic functions. So first of all we take the discrete derivatives, so d over dx, f, x, y, and I just actually write it as and last time I introduced this u, so this is actually just u star minus 1, this is e star minus 1 of f. <coughs> so these are these translation operators. And uh, we have also, then we can look at the uh, adjoint, the complex derivative is just, as in the, in the continuum, d over dx minus i d over dy, and then we have also the, the conjugate operator, so this is 1 d over dx star minus i d over dy star. So this is, uh, and then f is analytic, <coughs> But in principle, everything works also with more general uh, target spaces here. Is if <coughs> d over d z star f is equal to zero, and uh, example is also the <coughs> exponential function. So also, this exponential function has been just defined in such a way that the exponential function. It's just the relative is, is itself. So everything should be the same. So that was stressed last time. We want everything to be exactly the same. Every theorem in the textbooks, we should actually be able to take over and not change anything, except maybe some constants. And actually here, instead of 2 pi i, we will have a, a, 8 i. But we could also redefine things in such a way that, that it's 2 pi i. Th that's something I will explain. <clears throat> so these are examples of an analytic functions and then and then we have the Taylor's, Taylor theorem, that's something we have seen. So what we have is for an analytic function uh, the sum k is equal to 0 to infinity and then we have f to the k z over k factorial and then we have that's the Taylor theorem and for example the exponential function of course uh, has the Taylor series 1 plus z plus z squared. So everything is the same then in the continuum. But these are these derivatives, these are the kth derivatives here in the discrete, the discrete derivatives. So I explained this also here kind of a little bit with operator, with the operator language u and v. So this is uh, u. This is just done in such a way here that, that everything works like this deformation works like in the in the continuum. So that's the first, these are the first two parts. Maybe I just say something about the x and log. Actually, that's here. So uh, the definitions are here, and these definitions are just done in such a way that for the exponential function we get just everything before. That was actually the the reason for that for that definition and then we write it down with the usual exponential function and we can then solve the inverse. So log z is just the inverse. It's defined for every z not zero as in the continuum. <coughs> and it's also like in the continuum it's multi-valued. <laughs> the period is not 2 pi i but it's 8 i. <coughs> So what we have is the, you see that here because we have instead of 2 pi i, we have i y o4. The length of that circle here is 8, not 2 pi. That's the reason why we have a different number, not uh, 2 pi i, like in the continuum. You could modify the definitions also so that this is the same. <coughs>
And uh, so, so the log is the inverse, so that the logarithm will play an important role because we will actually use the logarithm to define rational functions like z minus a inverse. And we want to have all the calculus the same, so what we do is actually essentially define z minus a inverse as the derivative of, of log z minus a. And it be very clearly defined. These are the first three things. <coughs> So it's very important to, in the discrete that we distinguish between zero forms and one forms, even in one dimension, because zero forms are functions on vertices and one forms are ver functions on edges. And so we have to say how we actually go. So we have a, a function which is analytic. And uh, FTZ, this is a uh, one form. <coughs> So we have to say what we actually do. So f x y minus 1 dz. And uh, on this side here, we take f x y, f x minus 1 y i dz. It's important that this can be done in a consistent way, but analyticity exactly tells us. In order to do that, we have to kind of look first at the uh, contour. We have to define. So what we have done now, we have just defined from f, we have defined f dz. And now if z is a discrete curve, but the Shannon product is a very natural product. And it's homotopic to the triangulation when you leave out diagonals. So what we have is we have a discrete curve. That's an example of a discrete curve here. It's just uh, E1, E2, E3, until EN. We have a function on edges. We can actually kind of sum it up. So we can just say, so this is this function value F, Z, K. And then we have immediately the Cauchy, Morera is the inverse. So Cauchy theorem. <coughs> so what we have here, if you have a closed curve here. And actually the, the result just follows from the fact that it, if you go, go around a closed loop here and we do the line integral along a closed one of these plackets, if you make the line integral along this Placket, we should get zero. <laughs> and actually, this this condition here, which I just computed it here, is actually equivalent to the definition. So this is also the Cauchy-Riemann. You can write it as the Cauchy-Riemann differential equations. So that's kind of a nice that we have uh, this consistency. So and then it, it, once you have that kind of it's like zero curl, right? Once you have zero curl, then uh, every you have the closed loop property. That's what you learn in multivariable calculus. And then, then once you have it here for this small thing, so it's true for every every closed curve. And actually here this is contractible. So what could happen is that you, for example, would take some complete some some domain which is not simply connected, and then we don't assume that the functions which we have are actually. Uh, you know, gradient, gradient. So these one forms which we have here, this is a one form here. This doesn't necessarily have to be a, a, a gradient. <coughs> so it could also become, uh, and actually that's, that's, that's exactly happening in the next section. So if we take the, the function one over Z and uh, integrate that, that's essentially also in the multivariate calculus, this is this vortex situation when you actually get when you pick up pick up a, a face so what I'm telling you now is pretty new this is just in the last week I really kind of s s see so how this really works so uh, even so I have defined 1 over z as the derivative of log c for so 1 over z dz 
is defined as steel oxy. So what we can do is we can take this derivative of the log z, which we have explicitly given here, which is just a discrete derivative, right, using the definition, and then we can just define, like we have done before, we can define from this uh, one form, and then we can go along this closed loop here, which has length 8. You pick up this face, like 2 pi i, The continuum is very, very obvious because you just you, you, you cancel the z, but we don't have the this cancellation of z because z was defined, 1 over z was defined as the discrete derivative of the lock. So we have to actually compute that, compute the line integral, and actually see that it, it, it is equal to zero. So now we can put things together. So we need analyticity of the function, otherwise it doesn't work. We need analyticity also for the Taylor theorem. And uh, so if f is analytic, <laughs> And then what we have is, this is the theorem formula <coughs> that uh, 1 over of And the proof is just putting things together what we have. So f of c is, first of all, f of a plus f prime of a times c minus a plus f2 prime of a two factorial c minus a square, etc. So that's the Taylor, Taylor theorem that needs analyticity. <coughs> from the from the Cauchy integral theorem. And from six follows the integral theorem to five. And five and six follows that we have if we have one a in the curve, the round the round is we have the integral of the integral of the z. This a and z c minus a is z is actually just equal to equal to one. And if we take here the f of a here and we get f of a. And finally, if we take, if we multiply by z minus a or z minus a, and so now this Taylor theorem, this is a finite sum here. It's finite sum for every z. So that's how I see it now. This is still a uh, work in progress, and I have still to write this down. Uh...